Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is January 25th, Thursday, and we celebrate the feast day of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. So, let us begin as we always begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who taught the whole world through the preaching of the blessed Apostle Paul. Draw us, we pray, nearer to you, through the example of him whose conversion we celebrate today. And so make us witnesses to your truth in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul addressed the people in these words. I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in the city. At the feet of Gamaliel, I was educated strictly in our ancestral law and was zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted the way to, this way to death, binding both men and women and delivering them to prison. Even the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify on my behalf. For from them, I even received letters to the brothers and set out for Damascus to bring back to Jerusalem in chains for punishment, those there as well. On that journey, I drew near to Damascus. About noon, a great light from the sky suddenly shone around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I replied, who are you, sir? And he said to me, I am Jesus the Nazarene, whom you are persecuting. My companions saw the light but they did not hear the voice of the one who spoke to me. I asked, what shall I do, sir? The Lord answered me, get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told about everything, appointed for you to do. Since I could see nothing because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by my companions, and I entered Damascus. A certain Ananias, a devoted observer of the law and highly spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and stood there and said, Saul, my brother, regain your sight. And at that very moment, I regained my sight and I saw him. Then he said, the God of our ancestors designated you to know his will to see the righteous one and to hear the sound of his voice. For you will be his witness before all to what you have seen and heard. Now, why delay? Get up and have yourself baptized and your sins washed away, calling upon his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world 
and tell the good news. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons and they will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will say, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we hear a rather dramatic story about the conversion of St. Paul the Apostles. He's struck blind, right, on his way to Damascus. He's not going there to persecute the followers of Jesus. There's no doubt about that. Saul converted, and he becomes the great apostle, Paul. Using all of this energy he used to persecute, he then turns it toward the benefit of the church. And Paul becomes the apostles to the Gentiles, preaching Christ in many Roman lands. So you have those that go to the Jewish people to convert them from this kind of Old Testament to New Testament concept. There were no such things back then, but that's what they, you know, they're converting existing Jews to Christians. Paul, however, goes to everybody. He goes to everybody. If, if you remember the famous story where he goes to Rome, um, there's a, a statue to an unnamed God and he kind of claims it as that unnamed God. But I think that's imp an important concept is, you know, it, it's sometimes easy to talk to other Christians um, about Christianity, but we get, and for some of us, including me, we get into deep water sometimes when we're talking to people that don't have a concept of, of God or Christianity or an afterlife or any of those things. You know, they were raised basically un, uninitiated in any kind of faith. So my brothers and sisters, we're, we're called to do both things. We're called to um, talk to people about their conversion, talk to people about, but I think more importantly, we're there to listen. Um, we hear today in this gospel, Jesus commissioning of the apostles. So that kind of fits right in with that. The signs Jesus gives sound specific. Drive out demons, speak new languages, pick up servants, or serpents. Don't pick up servants, pick up serpents. And what sounds like an ability to overcome poisons. But how can all of this be, right? That sounds a little bit like mystical. Anyone who studies another language is saved. Anyone who studies another language is saved. Anyone who picks up a pet snake is saved. As with the parables, there's another layer here, right? It sounds confusing. What's this other layer? Well, what are today's demons? What are today's demons? They could be addiction. They could be selfishness. Uh, they could be a, an overbearing drive for worldly success. Um, Perhaps they're societal, he's talking about, systems that cultivate poverty and despair. In this case, what is a sign that accompanies those who do believe? Um, are we really called to drive out demons? Well, that could be fighting addiction. It could be seeking the kingdom of God over worldly success. It could be working to alleviate poverty or despair. Perhaps speaking a new language is finding an innovative way to share Jesus's message. 
televangelists did that. I mean, we make fun of the televangelists now, but it was novel and intuitive when they first started using the TV to spread the word of God. Maybe picking up a serpent is handling a tough situation. We've all had those, right? Drinking a deadly thing without harm is moving through temptations without giving in to them. The Gospels can often feel antiquated, irrelevant, old stuff, musty, not really anything that relates to today. But there's always a way, my brothers and sisters, to bring those things closer to our own experiences. So as you read Gospels, as you hear these stories, try to think in terms of what, how it relates to you personally. Not necessarily how you have to interpret it and so on. What did you hear? So often when we did Bible study, when I was going through formation, we would sit down and we would read the, you know, the readings. And the question would always be, what did you hear? What did you hear? And then we would read it again. You know, and after we had discussed it a little more, what did you hear? My brothers and sisters, that's what we're called to do. What did we hear? What did we experience? What impacted us? Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God in the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be gifted with the... Um, blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all people by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. For these intentions and those entered into our prayer and petition book, that they may be received and answered by our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray that the Holy Spirit may help us to recognize the gift of different charisms within the Christian community and to discover the richness of different traditions and rituals in the Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, nourish in us that faith taught by the preaching of the apostles, and kept safe by the labors of St. Timothy and Titus. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Happy, what day is it? Happy Thursday. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Friday, for another liturgy of the word. Amen. Have a blessed day.